America Looks Abroad with your foreign correspondent, Robert Arden. Presented each weeknight over these stations by the 12 Southern California offices of Dr. Cowan, the friendly credit dentist, whose main Los Angeles office is over the Owl Drug, 5th and Broadway. And now, by transcription, here is Robert Arden. Good evening. The Balkan situation looks very serious tonight. The fall of Thessaloniki, the important harbor on the Aegean, is liable to prove a very critical handicap to the Greek forces in eastern and central Thrace. As a matter of fact, the Nazi thrust to Thessaloniki seems to have cut off entirely the valiant Greek troops which, according to the latest communiques, are still holding out on the mountain ranges along the Bulgarian border against terrific Nazi assaults. Now, if the Nazis can widen the gap, and push further to the west, the Greek armies in eastern Thrace will undoubtedly be forced to surrender. And, quite candidly, that would be a hard blow, because it has been announced by Athens that the vital Rodopi defenses had been manned with the heroic soldiers from Albania. Now, another very dangerous move has been made by Nazi columns in central Serbia. After occupying the former Serbian capital of Nish, the Nazi mechanized divisions pushed on southward and joined their advance columns at Skopje. A new drive was started almost immediately from there, and that drive, according to a communique released by Berlin, carried the Nazi forces beyond Prilep and Tetovo, two small but strategic towns in south-central Serbia. Tetovo is only about 20 miles east of the Albanian border. And last night, German authorities stated that a junction has already been established between the Nazi and fascist forces. That, if true, would be perhaps the most serious and damaging blow to the Allied defense lines, inasmuch as it would isolate Yugoslavia. If the connection between Greece and Yugoslavia should be severed, it would mean that an eventual collapse of Yugoslavia is only a question of a short time. The Yugoslavs, heroic though the individual soldier may be, have no modern war equipment that would enable them to make a successful stand against a Nazi juggernaut. All tanks, munitions, bombs and planes to be used against the Nazi aggression must be sent to Yugoslavia from Greece. If that lifeline is cut, resistance becomes impossible. Of course, it can be anticipated that many of the Serbian contingents would retire into the rugged mountains and in all probability keep up a continued guerrilla warfare against the Nazis. But that, at best, would be annoying and perhaps even costly in human lives to the Nazis. But it would hardly change the ultimate outcome. The report of the junction with the fascist forces, however, emanated from Berlin only. It has not been confirmed by either Rome, Athens or London. On the contrary, the Yugoslav legation in Athens issued a communique to the effect that Yugoslav forces are steadily advancing in Albania, that they have crossed the Dren River, and are well on their way to central Albania. That report sounds far more credible because, contrary to the Nazi assertion, it was confirmed by both Rome and Athens. It is therefore possible that the Yugoslavs may yet reach the Italian main force in Albania before the Nazis can come to its aid. That, naturally, would have a tremendous effect upon the entire situation because it would establish a new defense line running from Zara on the Adriatic coast over Montenegro's Cetinje, along the Albanian-Yugoslav border down into central Greece. And that line would be favored by wild and impassable mountain ranges where the Yugoslavs, Greeks, and British could possibly hold out against all further Nazi advances. Perhaps that is even the strategic plan adopted by the Allied High Command. Now let's have a word from Lumassel. Probably two of the most prominent words in the headlines of today's news are emergency and preparedness. Naturally, they relate to national affairs. But it occurred to me that they can have a far more personal implication if applied to dentistry, and here's what I mean. Dentistry can easily be subdivided into the same classifications, emergency dentistry and preparation dentistry. Preparation dentistry is being preached and stressed by the entire dental profession today just as it has been for years past. Every good dentist would far rather prepare your teeth for years of health defense and trouble-free usefulness than to make emergency repairs made necessary by your own dental negligence. At least this is the choice of Dr. Cowan, the friendly credit dentist, and this choice is obvious in the amount of advertising that Dr. Cowan sponsors 
simply in an effort to urge you to have your teeth cared for regularly. Undoubtedly, the dentist's work would be simpler if his only tasks were to pull your teeth and replace them with artificial dentures. That would be a highly specialized and relatively simple work. But no conscientious dentist would care to take this easy way out. His interest is always to preserve your natural teeth for the greatest possible length of time. It's true enough that today's artificial dentures of transparent material are remarkable in point of comfort, economy, service, and appearance. But just the same, Dr. Cowan prefers his policy of never extracting a natural tooth that can be saved. Better have your teeth checked over now. The main Dr. Cowan friendly credit dental office is over the Owl Drug, 5th and Broadway in downtown Los Angeles. Now back to Robert Arden. It may not be very long before it will become clear whether this is the plan of the Allied High Command or not. The Nazis, apparently, are now moving on two fronts toward central Greece, the region of Mount Olympus, the home of the Greek gods. There, the British expeditionary forces and the Greek armies are said to have occupied defense positions carefully selected by the Allied High Command. The Nazi communique mentioned that within 24 hours, Nazi advance forces are expected to come to grips with the British troops for the first time since the campaign in the Low Countries. What is going to happen there, nobody knows. General Wavell is in command and he's an able strategist. He may have an ace or two up his sleeve. The most astounding phenomenon of the Balkan Blitz, however, is the almost miraculous speed with which the Nazis follow up their advances. It is said by Athens and Belgrade that all Nazi successes in southern Serbia and Greece were bought at a terrific price in human lives. There seems to be just that chance that the Nazis, whose total strength on the Balkans is reportedly not more than 25 divisions or about 500,000 men, will begin to feel these losses when they meet with determined and perhaps equally well-mechanized resistance. However, if the British fail to halt the Nazi drive, it will perhaps be the greatest disaster of the present war. In that particular region, there is no avenue of escape open to retreating forces. The British High Command must know that. And for that reason, I assume that the resistance will be offered there, resistance of a kind that can stop the Nazi steamroller. On the East African front, the sea base of Massawa finally was taken by the British forces. This event, although it means but little because of the Italian weakness there, may still gain great importance since the British will now be able to transfer part of the forces to North Africa where the combined Nazi fascist forces are coming dangerously close again to the Egyptian border. Derna, the Cyrenaican base taken by the British more than two months ago, was recaptured by Axis forces today, and that re-establishes almost the status quo of two months ago, when the Italians were inside Egypt's borders before General Wavell's historic counter-offensive nearly wrote finis to fascism inside and outside of Italy. Prime Minister Winston Churchill voiced his apprehension and his concern over the African situation before the British House of Commons today when he said, and I quote, Now that the Germans are using their armored forces in Cyrenaica, we must expect much and hard fighting, not only in defense of Cyrenaica, but in defense of Egypt. This brings back to mind the fact that a two-pronged attack on the Suez Canal had been an accepted Axis strategy long before open warfare actually broke out. The Nazis were scheduled to advance through the Balkans, cross the Dardanelles and come through Asia Minor, while the fascists were slated to attack from Libya and the Cyrenaica. Last year's Italian advance into Egypt was halted because Hitler at that time was not ready for a Balkan move. Now, because of some strange and very mysterious, well, let's say coincidences, Hitler is advancing on the Balkans while other Nazi forces have taken over North Africa and are threatening to make the old plan now a reality. Now, here is Lou Marcel with another word for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Arden has had many years of service as foreign correspondent in Europe, a fact which enables him to speak of the places and peoples, the causes and effects of the present world struggle with great insight and indisputable authority. For his distinguished public service as news analyst and radio commentator on foreign affairs, he was honored by the American Academy of Public Affairs with its coveted 1940 award. 
Under the auspices of the American Academy of Public Affairs, Mr. Arden will present a series of three lectures on timely subjects with particular consideration of current events. The first lecture of the series will be held Wednesday, April 16th, at 8.30 p.m. at the Film Art Theatre at 1228 North Vine Street in Hollywood. Mr. Arden is going to discuss the ideology of totalitarianism. One week later, on Wednesday, April 23rd, the subject will be Democracy in a Changing World. And the last subject of the series on Wednesday, April 30th, will be What Comes After This War. After each lecture, an open forum will be conducted. For reservations and further information, write or telephone the American Academy, and the phone number is Hollywood 5182, or the Ted Lesser Agency, phone Crestview 61442. I'll repeat those numbers. The American Academy, Hollywood 5182, the Ted Lesser Agency, Crestview 61442. Seats may be reserved for one or all three lectures in advance. Once again, we return you to Robert Arden. How much this present Balkan success means to Hitler and what he is planning to do with it is indicated by two incidents which, in all probability, will not make the headlines of our newspapers. According to reliable reports from Budapest, Nazi Germany is now moving numerous torpedo boats into the Black Sea from their new port. These boats are destined to counteract the British control of the Aegean Sea. In addition, dismantled submarines are being shipped by rail from Germany to Bulgaria. Now, basing their opinion upon these facts, well-informed diplomatic sources felt that Hitler will probably demand that Turkey pass these vessels through the Dardanelles and use the Nazi forces now massed all around Turkey's borders in Bulgaria and Thrace to back up his diplomatic requests. Whether Turkey will be able to stand pat and refuse Hitler's demand, that remains to be seen, and it will all depend upon the extent of Hitler's advance into Greece. If he is stopped by the Anglo-Greek forces, Turkey may hold out. If he breaks their resistance, Turkey will have to give in. The second incident is reported from Berlin. The dispatch very laconically states that the Soviet ambassador conferred with Nazi Foreign Minister von Ribbentrop and li later met with the Nipponese ambassador. It was believed that these conversations were related to Japanese Foreign Minister Yosuke Matsuoka's prolonged talks in Moscow. There may not be much behind these mysterious talks as yet, but they indicate that something could happen, all depending again upon the outcome of the Balkan War. Mr. Churchill openly warned Russia today by stating that there are many signs of a Nazi attempt to secure a granary in the Ukraine and oil fields in the Russian Caucasus. The meetings in Berlin and Moscow may easily have dealt with these questions, and in view of Hitler's proximity to Turkey's borders, it is conceivable that he would not hesitate too long before sending his troops against Turkey. They are now favored by their own strong momentum, which might easily carry them across the narrow strip of land, which is European Turkey. Au revoir. Each evening, Monday through Friday at 7.45, America looks abroad with your foreign correspondent, Robert Arden. A radio feature presented over these stations by Dr. Cowan, the friendly credit dentist, whose offices are located in 12 communities from Ventura to San Diego, including Long Beach, opposite Buffum's Broadway at Pine, East Los Angeles, Whittier, the corner of Kern. The main Los Angeles office in the Metropolitan Building, 5th and Broadway, over the Owl Drug. For approximate prices in advance, phone Mutual 1191. Until tomorrow evening at 7.45, this is Lou Marcel reminding that you can never afford to neglect your teeth when you can always afford to see Dr. Cowan. This transcribed program originated in Warner Brothers Hollywood Studios.